everybody. Happy Saturday. And today, well, we're going to have a little bit of fun again. Well, we always have fun. Uh, the best part is you're going to get some really great information in real time. We're going to talk about basically, uh, is there a looming slowdown in front of us? And then what in the heck are the feds thinking? Who knows, right? We're going to go over that. But first, hey, make sure you subscribe. It's free. <laughs> There's no strings attached. If you like information that is relevant today and in our area versus, you know, information they're talking about still in May and June, I mean, it is towards the end of August, for heaven's sakes. Uh, if you would like real-time information, share this information with your friends, and this way everybody can make a really good business decision. That's really the best part. All right, so uh, it's interesting because this morning, I had kind of a little bit of a flood of uh, comments regarding last week uh, on uh, my uh, my knee, uh, which is, I know many of you are horribly concerned, is much better. Uh, they call it nursemaid's knee. And I said, yeah, there's got to be a, a better dude name for nursemaid's knee. Now, there were quite a few comments and a number of them by clients and friends many of which I can truly say is not worth repeating in public. Uh, however, uh, we did have a good laugh over it. Uh, John, one of my dear friends, he did say, you know, hey, call it, uh, uh, I think it was Larry Zonka knee, you know, and those of you who remember football, uh, awesome. Anyway, and then there were a few others that uh, uh, Buddy sent out, you know, Weiner's knee. And fortunately, I said, well, you know, that's not so bad because you spelt it W-I-N-E-R-S versus W-H, which, you know, I wine, you know, I like an occasional glass of wine, so that's not so bad. And then, of course, he tried to retract it, and I said, that didn't work. He only gets one crack at it, uh, which then led to a uh, few expletives and entertaining conversation. So anyway, thank you for everybody for, uh, for <laughs> your comments and some of those not-so-kind caring words that I know have a very dude-like deep meaning to it. All right. Uh, the other thing is, uh, you know, I had a great conversation with Angel who's looking at getting into real estate and, and talking about the, the different elements and the difficulties of real estate and everything else. And uh, he responded back, you know, letting us know he'd watched the video. And he said, now, you know, I get it. When you guys talk about you lead with generosity and, and, and helping others and during that process, earning, earning somebody's business. Uh, he said, you know, I totally get it now. He said, uh, that was absolutely amazing. So, Angel, uh, thank you for that acknowledgement. That was awesome sauce. Look forward to having a deeper conversation with you. Talking about deeper conversations, Dave and Paula, two of my, uh, some of my, I've got some really awesome uh, clients and friends and, and whatnot. And Dave and Paula, uh, you know, they have, they could not have reached out really at a better time, letting us know about a few homes that uh, were looking at coming up in their area that our clients are interested in. So we're able to uh, look at helping them and uh, helping a seller, uh, giving each of them more time, less stress, uh, doing a potential off-market sale, which is awesome. So Dave and Paula, my big thumbs up to you. I've got a special gift going to you, uh, which is gonna be fun. Other than I need to come by and say hi again. Anyway, let's get the show on the road. Let's have a little bit of fun. So the question is, are we looking at a looming slowdown? Are we looking at a shift in market? Okay, so yes and no. All right, yes, we're looking at kind of a looming, uh, you know, temporary, I think, slowdown. No, we're not looking at a shift in the market. We don't have enough inventory to have a shift in the market. <laughs> we're back right near that. But, but, hey, you know, it's funny, is this last week we've, uh, We've been kind of hypersensitive and really uh, asking a lot of other other agents outside of our company uh, who are listing agents and you know that our uh, that our team are showing homes to and and whatnot and asking the question, hey, have uh, you noticed anything uh, different about the market of late? And almost straight across the board, it's super interesting. And in fact, had some really awesome conversations with some uh, agents up north, you know, up north being in Snohomish area, and. It is interesting, they're like, yeah, you know, we've noticed that, you know, the buyers are kind of slowing down, things are slowing down a little bit. Uh, yeah, you know, homes, you know, gosh, you know, our home just didn't go off the market in, in five days, or, you know, we didn't get our, 
are 17 to 20 showings, 13 technically on average, and 17 to 20 for us. Uh, not that I'm bragging. But anyway, uh, as we go through and we've been chatting with certain agents uh, and including chatting with our clients, many of them say, oh yeah, hey, you know, I'm going to be gone for two weeks, so, you know, I'm, I won't be looking at my portal, or hey, you know, yeah, we're going to hold off, uh, we're going to go on vacation, we're going to go do this, oh hey, you know, we've got kids getting back in school, we're really trying to grab, wrap, you know, wrap our hands around what is this going to look like, and you know, do we do online or do we do in person? You know, all of these things. So really what's starting to happen and which we are predicting uh, may not be a massive uh, uh, slowdown, which that's not what we're expecting, but we are expecting a little bit of a pullback, meaning that we're going to see a little bit of slowdown. People are going to feel it, especially sellers are going to feel this as people are looking at, again, last minute vacations, you've got a three day weekend coming up. Uh, you know, people are going to start wanting to do things before the weather turns in October. We've got kids going back to school, uh, both at all school levels. And what is that going to look like? And what that means is for a little bit of time, buying a home is not going to be top of mind. Okay. But that's not unusual. That is normal. So, okay, so last year we were stuck at home <laughs> and we were released this year. <laughs> and so what that means is that people are going to get back to the normal ways. This is our normal slowdown. We're going to start to see that kind of slowing trend as we hit the end of August, uh, you know, through the middle of September and start to bump up again towards middle end of September into October. Totally normal. Okay just looming. It's a little different, but not bad. It's not bad by any stretch. Just plan for it. Now, here's the thing. So we've been chatting with some of our buyers. Or a comment to our buyers uh, in caution to the sellers, but a comment on a pro for a buyer is this. It says, hey, listen, sellers are going to feel this. They're going to see that things have started to pull back and they're going to get a little anxious. And now is a fabulous time really to focus on some of the areas that has been tougher for you to enter into uh, the market. You will have that opportunity to potentially enter into that market. So make sure that you are not deviating, that you are at least keeping that third eye <laughs> on, on the market and what's coming on market, what has gone past a seven or 10 days on the market and starting to target that. So if you're a buyer out in the market, hey, uh, don't go on summer vacation here. Okay. Keep an eye on the ball. Keep an eye on the end zone here because you stand a greater opportunity of getting a home maybe historically you would not have gotten uh, a couple of months ago. So keep that in mind. And that's just something as we go through the numbers here to keep in mind. Again, are we looking at a shift in the market? No, we're not. Are you going to hear some potential media stirrings more than likely, but let's go through this. And then you tell me what you think and reply back and don't be shy. And if you have questions, ask, ring that bell, make sure that you are being alerted when we're doing these, because this is interactive. If you ask me a question, we'll answer your question, you know, within 30 minutes, except for on Sunday. Okay. Uh, you'll get an answer and we get a lot of questions and we love answering them. No strings attached. All right. Okay. So let's talk about year over year. So again, this is, we are getting so close to the single digit that we predicted. Now, yes, this is not the 52, the 48%, uh, 58%, uh, you know, less inventory because we're looking at again, two markets that are very similar to each other versus two dissimilar markets, which is 2019 to 2020. Now, Look at these numbers. So new on market is uh, up 12.9%. Pended are up 12.4. Again, every single week we are watching. Anytime we see a bump up in uh, in inventory, uh, you know, as far as new actives coming on market, ah, oh, the pendings follow right behind it. When the when the new on uh, market start to uh, you know wane a little bit, hey, so do the pendings. 
gosh, you don't think that has anything to do with coming uh, market, you know, material homes inventory coming on market, do you? Nah, it would have nothing to do with that. Of course it does, because you, if it's not available for sale, well, for the average person, unless you're dealing with off-market home sales, right? You can only buy what's available in, in on the Northwest MLS, right? And if this drops, naturally pending drops. Okay, so what? All right, but note, they are still following and tracking each other pretty tight. We are up year over year, almost 22%. It actually started to edge back up, even though I think, because last year we didn't have a slowdown in August, uh, between August and September, uh, that, that normal historic slowdown, we didn't have it last year. I think our numbers will look a little bit different this year. Not horrible, but I think this, this is going to drop down just a little bit for a short period of time uh, and then pop back up again. So don't panic if you see that, uh, because this year I am expecting that to change a little bit. Kids are getting back to school. Again, mindset is not, I need to buy a house or I need to sell a house, top of mind. That's not number one. It's like number four. <laughs> Just keep that in mind. All right. When we take a look at it, same month, 2020 versus 2021. Uh, inventory is down 10.6%. Expected. Uh, new on market is up 5.9. Pended is up 3.3. And we're up 6.5. Just for the month of August. Okay. 2020, 2021. All the way to, to the 20th. Right? So, uh, that gives you an idea that we are still outperforming last year. We're just not, we're just not keeping quite as much momentum, but again, I would fully expect that completely because we're let out of the cage. We can go play last year. We weren't all right. Month over month. So, uh, inventory is up 21.1% new on market is up 6.1%, but look at this pendant is up 17.4 and then number of sales is down 3.4%. Again, completely expected, normal digits. We'll see these numbers as they translate. We'll start to see the final results in September. Uh, well, because it has to be at least September 1 to see August 31st. Huh, there you go. All right, so in the last seven days, 1,623 homes came on market. More consistent with what we're seeing. We like to see between 1,800 and 2,000 homes coming on market every week, at least as a minimum in this market, actually should be four to 5,000, but we're not there. All right, but look at this, pended, pended, we went, uh, we have 2005 that actually went off market and 1,725 that sold. So it doesn't take a math, <laughs> math genius to figure out that we are still drawing down, we're still taking more homes off market that is com than, than, than is coming in the market, right? Okay, so if I had a great analogy, I would give it to you, but uh, right now I'm kind of drawing a blank because I can't use my sponge other than to say the sponge, uh, which is super dry, is still taking in more water than what's being poured into it. In other words, if you have that sponge on the counter and you know that if you pour water into it, and by the way, just a sidebar, this is hilarious. Uh, so I was actually out in, when I was uh, interviewing with, uh, with a new client, they're like, hey, George, I just want you to know, I listened to that, that sponge story of yours. And uh, so my son was watching it. And I just want to let you know that my son said, Dad, what does that mean? And he said, he jumped up. <laughs> he jumped up and he said, well, come on over to the sink. I'll show you. And so he took that dry sponge that had been, you know, drying all night. And he put it there. He said, this is a dry sponge. And, you know, he says, now look. He says, you put it in a plate. He said, I didn't want to put it on the counter because I didn't want water all over the place. So he said, I turned on the faucet a little bit and I poured a little bit of water in there. And I said, see, son, see how there's no water around it? He's like, yeah, well, that's what he's talking about, that this is the housing inventory and the sponge is just soaking it up. He's like, yeah. And he says, when we get to a balance market, he says, hang on. Hang on. He said, now look, you see now how we're getting just a little bit of water on the outside? He said he shut off the water. He said, yeah, that's a balanced market. So it's full and we have a little bit around the, the edge of that sponge. He's like, oh, okay. And he said, now look. And he's he said he ripped that faucet on and it flooded this place. He says, no, that's too much inventory. And he's like, yeah. And he says, shut it off. And he says, yeah, he's squeezing. And he says, now we're back to too little inventory. And the son said, dad, that's pretty smart. You got that. <laughs> I thought that was awesome. Anyway, so there you go. So the sponge is still soaking in that water. We do not have a surplus of inventory. We're down to 10 days. That is super important to understand. We do not have enough inventory. So if you're on the fence, 
even though we're we're heading into a slightly slower time, okay? Pricing is everything. Remember, sellers, pay attention. It's super important, okay? There are three reasons a home doesn't sell. Price, location, and condition or floor plan, okay? And price fixes it every time. So don't overprice. In fact, in fact, message to the seller. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, we have a limited inventory. We have 10 days. We should have four to six months of inventory. We have 10 days. Here's what is super important for you to understand. The people that reduced their price, which was basically 500, that's the biggest number I've seen in a while, that should never happen. That's called wrong expectation, whether you or by your agent. Wrong expectation. You should never have a price reduction in today's market where there are just not enough homes. Okay? All right. We have 27 that expired, 141 that canceled. Uh, that should never happen either. Okay? Uh, realistically, when we take a look at, what is that, five, six, 600 homes on the market, oh heck, we only have, we only have a total of 7,180. Marie will post this right there. Uh, there we go. See, right there. Okay. 7,180. And if we've got 600 of those sellers that well, didn't quite listen to this video, right? Uh, that's a, that's a, that's one, that's just shy of one sixth, right? That's like one seventh of our inventory just went boop, right? That should have sold. We should not have any of those issues. Not when we've got all of this driving, low inventory. Now, understand, the one of the biggest drivers right now, right, are mortgage rates, okay? I was chatting with Dan Golden at uh, Cornerstone Lending and, and Juliana at, uh, at Cornerstone. And as we are getting, uh, you know, kind of their feedback, they're noticing applications are coming, you know, steadily in. Uh, but, you know, people are, you know, being the cautious like they should be. They're looking at this and say, hey, you know, this has been a steady eddy for a while. And some of the uh, buyers out there are saying, George, you know, you've said, you know, this is like five weeks now. And I'm like, I know. Why does that happen? I said, that's super simple. In the beginning, I said, what are the feds thinking? Right. Okay. So the feds take a look at the big picture. They have nothing to do with technically with setting the mortgage rates because mortgage rates are based on bond rates, 10 year treasury. Uh, it's in the stock market, right? Okay. So if it's in the stock market, okay, then the market drives it and it is based on consumer confidence and what the big investors are doing, moving in and out. I heard there's a little bit of an issue going in Afghanistan, which creates a little bit of strife in the market. Not that I would know anything about that, but anyway, those kinds of things affect it. And so you will see uh, uh, momentum in and out of bonds and whatnot. But another key thing, right? So when we talk about inflation, inflation, the numbers did not come in as high as they had expected, which is good. Okay. We had uh, unemployment was a uh, 17 month low, which is awesome. Lumber prices are coming down. But here's the thing. One of the key drivers when we talk about mortgage backed securities, right? And we said, hey, this is one of those metrics. So if we have mortgage backed securities and we've got the feds who are buying between $50 billion and $120 billion of mortgage backed securities each month to help keep this rate low, okay? That means that when they slow that buying of the mortgage backed securities, that means rates will start to bump up, which is one way of slowing down our market and to slow down inflation. They are talking about that next week in Jackson Hole. So we're going to find out, are they going to maintain their current process each month of buying mortgage backed securities in the billions, or are they going to start pulling back? And that will have an impact on, on interest rates because again, bond rates. Okay, so keep that in mind. Some people might be saying, George, what the heck is a mortgage-backed security? Well, here's the simplified version of it, okay? You've got, uh, let's say that you've got 
a, well, Fanny and Freddie, right? They write a lot of these and, you know, uh, Fanny and, and uh, VA and whatnot. But anyway, everybody writes to those guidelines because they're government bought. Hence why the forbearance program and the workout programs of the forbearance program, you know, based on these programs, right? That's why they have leverage because they're mortgage backed by the government. They're buying investment. They're buying you. The fact that you will promise to make your payments. It's a pretty safe bet, all things considered, right? In my humble opinion, it is. Okay, so we have, let's say, a uh, hundred banks making mortgages. You got your B of A, you got your Wells Fargo, you got uh, Dan over at Cornerstone Lending, you got Julian at, at uh, Qualstar Credit Union, you've got BECU, and you got Seattle Metropolitan Credit Union, you've got all these other guys making loans. And they sell them to Fannie and Freddie. Then Fannie and Freddie, they will package these not in, you know, like a hundred, but in billions of dollars of a loan portfolio that match a specific criteria, okay? And that's why they had the limitation of how many could be non-owner occupied in this pool of, 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 uh, of loans. And they package that up and make it into a mortgage-backed security that they can sell. And they can sell these out on the market, right? They can sell them to your insurance company for stability, your retirement company for stability, for hedge funds and everybody who's looking for stability as to a portfolio, a, you know, a guaranteed return, if you want to call it, right? Okay, so they, they make the loans, they get the loan fees, they discount it, poof, they sell it. The feds come in and they buy those. That's what keeps your bond rates down, or pushes your bond rates up, I should say, and keeps your mortgage rates below 3%. When that starts to change, when they start reducing that, that buying of those securities, hey, that's going to affect the, the value of the bond as the bond goes down, interest rates go up because they're inverse of each other. All right, there you go. Now you have some really great information. So with that, if you have any questions, send them out to us, post them. Absolutely love to hear from you guys. Uh, we will respond to you uh, within 30 minutes, except for, well, on Sundays. Uh, with that, Angel, thank you again for an absolutely fabulous conversation. And uh, again, uh, Dave and Paula, you guys are awesome. You guys rock. Uh, in the meantime, have an absolutely fabulous Cooler Saturday. And uh, I will catch you guys on the next video. Remember to subscribe. Remember to hit the bell and share this with somebody uh, so they can get some real-time information. In the meantime, you guys have a beautiful day. I'll see you on the next video. Take care.